which is about how we're improving the ball handling system, especially for uh, fast balls. <laughs> so, uh, the ball handling system, as I guess most of you know it, is a system that allows the robot to actually catch balls and also dribble with them uh, while moving. So, it looks uh, mainly like this, and it's our first uh, ball handling system. Uh, because this other two levers actually, it's rotated about this point. Uh, there's a spring behind here to, uh, to actually let it move. On each lever is a, is a wheel, which can be uh, rotated. Um, and by the rotation of this wheel, you can influence the rotation of the ball. Um, and this you can control where the, the ball is going. Um, if you actually make the ball rotate towards, the levers of course uh, move up. You can actually imagine that. And you want to keep control so that the uh, the, the levers stay at a fixed position, so they ensure they still get possession of the ball. So that's basically how it works. Uh, the system is a cascaded controller, so we regulate the speed of the wheels, and with that we regulate the angle of the levers. And that's how we let uh, the ball rotate. On the end of the presentation, I will go a bit deeper into this uh, control scheme. Um, but for now, this is our system in use. Where the green line shows the uh, new system and the red line shows the uh, old system. 
And the same goes over here. So here you can see the, the angle of the ball coming in. And of course, on the, um, the out of radius, also the percentage of the balls that it actually catch. Um, as you can see, uh, the green line is also is wider everywhere. So it's really, really able to catch uh, balls in a wider angle. Um, which we also see the little dip over here. At each position, we tested it with five balls. And here we just lost the ball, so it seems a bit biased. Um, but you can imagine all these points together are already a lot of test data. But uh, in the main picture, you can still see that this, uh, this image is uh, definitely brought up. Um, but what we also saw was that because the, um, the new system, the lever hinges are placed harder to actually have more uh, space for the ball coming in, um, and also because of the perpendicular to the wall, we expected the system to be stronger. So we actually wanted to, to test this hypothesis. Um, I mean, we did the same test again with the new and the old system, and we put them in a scrum situation. Um, so first of all, we did just a drop hole and tested how many of the times the new system would win from the old system. And at the same time, we also did our ball handling test, which means that the robot does not drive autonomously, we can just move, uh, randomly move it around, uh, put them against each other, and yeah, just threw them apart and, and looked which one was, uh, was better. And as you can see in the big picture, the new system is exactly strong, so it's also good to prove it at the same time. So uh, to show this, here's a little movie. On the left side, you can see the, uh, the old system performing. On the right side, the new system. You can definitely see that this area here for catching the ball is way, way bigger than over here. Um, and over here, you can see the uh, our famous greenfield, so you can actually see what the robots are doing. I'm not sure why I stopped now. And here, just in the uh, in the demo, just pass it to each other. So as you can see that uh, this system fails sometimes and this system really gets uh, actually every ball. Okay, so uh, then we go a little bit deeper in our uh, cascading control designs, which uh, looks like this. So we're going to uh, go bottom up. Um, first of all, you can here distinguish the, uh, the inner loop of the system. So what we have here is a reference, which actually says the rotational speed of the wheels, uh, what it should be. Um, that goes into the, uh, the feedback controller, um, and out comes the torque, so the torque should be applied. And of course, you have to convert that uh, to an analog voltage uh, signal, which goes into the robot. Then the robot lets the wheels rotate. We measure the rotation of the wheels again and fed it back to the feedback uh, regulator. So this wheel, uh, loop is responsible for the rotational velocity of the wheels, and the bandwidth of this control is about 25 hertz. Then we have the other loop, uh, which has as a reference signal on the angle of the levers of the bonding system. And we again also measure this angle, and out of the controllers comes a reference velocity which goes into the inner loop. Well, the inner loop has a bandwidth of about 25 hertz, and the outer loop has a bandwidth lower than that, about 10 to 15 hertz. So, with that, you can actually imagine the inner loop to be unity gain um, and actually yeah, uh, prove the stability of the, of the outer loop as well. Then, there's still two other blocks remaining. Um, this block is a velocity feed forward, so it can actually tune for friction and that kind of, uh, of things for the velocity of the wheels. And this purple here, which is actually very important, is an advanced feed forward signal. So what it does, it knows the uh, x, y, theta, so the position of the robot, and by now it knows the velocity of the robot, so it knows how the robot is going to move. And with that, it can actually calculate the right direction the ball should move to follow that movement. And, and it can also apply this to this uh, to the scheme over here. So you already have information about how the robot is going to move, so you already know how the ball is going to behave, and so you can already fed it into our scheme. Um, and this proved to be very, very good also. So that's how our control scheme more or less works. So that brings us to this movie, which is about our latest uh, world championship.